I would take 15 showers a day and then soak in the tub uh, two or three hours just because I thought it was bathing. I didn't know what it was. I want to be clear for the viewers today, I'm not a medical doctor. They see the PhD, they think I'm in a scientific field. I'm not, so I want to be real clear. So my uh, interpretation may be a little different than perhaps some of the scientists. But basically what it is, uh, is the FMO3 gene that has a mutation on it. And that mutation usually prohibits the liver from breaking down byproducts of protein. Therefore, uh, the trimethylene, it just doesn't pass normally as it would with someone without the FMO3 gene mutation. And that usually builds up in the body and it can come out in a patient's breath, sweat, um, I've heard of it in their scalp, tear ducts in their eyes, any uh, opening. Uh, oftentimes this disorder causes paranoia, as you can imagine. When you see someone do that, it might not even be the TMAU patient, but because they've been ridiculed and so many condescending comments, they immediately think that it's them. And then sometimes they'll get into stress mode. And what happens when we have stress? We, well, at least me, I start to sweat more and so forth. And that makes it even worse. So it's a never ending circle. But for some people, the diet, the low choline diet, using a low pH soaps seems to help. Unfortunately for others, um, nothing really seems to help. Many physicians will assume, due to their training, that it's a psychological problem. For example, it took me three years going from doctor to doctor before one doctor finally said, okay, I'm going to give you this test. It's about $650. Now, I know for perhaps maybe you or I or someone, you're saying, well, what's the big deal, Cheryl? Well, some of the people, and I'll talk about this later, at the TMA, you are either underemployed or unemployed. Social Security doesn't recognize TMAU as a disability. So 650 cash for someone who's not working and barely uh, paying their mortgage or rent can be phenomenal. Phone, the phone interviews, they always tell me, Cheryl, uh, wow, you know, you're a perfect candidate. And then um, you get flown down and you can tell that the faces, the enthusiasm just kind of just drain out of them. And if you do get a job, it's a battle to keep it. And people have told me, Cheryl, I've walked into work every day, there's soap on my desk, there's detergent. It, that hasn't happened to me but I can only imagine how they must feel walking in every morning to that. Uh, there was someone who just called me uh, a couple months ago uh, out of Washington, D.C. And one of the things, and this employer wanted to help, one of the things I told the employer, why not move Jane's office down to the end where it's not as many people and there was two windows there. And uh, from what they're telling me, I got an email from the, her boss and her, there, it's working great. For those of you watching today, you're not alone. Uh, it may seem that way, but for those of you watching, my phone number's on the internet and I get calls at three in the morning. So you're never alone. Call me, call the other support groups, email. Uh, if you're in town, they can come by and visit. I've been invited to people's homes and so forth. Uh, there are support groups all over. You can Skype now. They have meetups uh, where people that have this disorder or people who, who are interested in it can go and learn. It's usually a weekend retreat. So things that I didn't have that they do have, so you're never alone. You may feel alone, but you're never alone.